Welcome back, folks, to Let's Play Baldur's Gate 2, the Enhanced Edition, The Throne of Baal. And when last we left off, Melisande is in the Throne of Baal right now, absorbing all of Baal's essence in the hopes of becoming a divine entity. And we really don't want that to happen, so let us go and cut off some of that divine essence right now by heading this way. One problem, this is where Yan Bin is, the Prince of Air. And the Prince of Air has a couple of allies. These vampiric wraiths are quite dangerous because they can drain our levels. So let's see if we can stop that, and we have. Marvelous. So let's deal with these uh, elementals now. And then this one. Then this one. Not losing uh, any levels there means that we can uh, focus on saving our spells for a later time and getting ready for the next phase of this very nasty fight. Time to quaff some potions. Time also to lay a couple of traps. I feel like a uh, couple of spike traps here might be pretty good. Thinking three or four might get us through a lot of damage. It worked for Demogorgon, it'll surely work for Melisar. Excellent. Now what we do is uh, we move you to here so that when this bridge goes, as I remember this bridge does go, you will be uh, on that side. All of our hardinesses have faded, so I'm going to save now. This is as good a point as uh, we'll get for this phase of the uh, fight. There are many phases. We're going to use another hardiness apiece. You actually don't have enough to uh, last for every single phase. Hopefully that will be uh, enough. And you have haste. Actually, you don't have hastes, do you? You don't have haste, so... very well. Let's yes. have you... Actually, do you have another use of it? Yes, you do. You have another use of haste, hmm. which is great. Go over there yeah. and have a haste cast on you by Edwin. Where are our improved hastes? There we go. Corgan, you're going to need one of these. There we go. And with that, now we're ready to give this a try. Right. Do this. You cut off the pool's flow, stopping Melisarm for the time being. And here she is. I have gathered enough essence to deal with you. I will wait no longer to end your pathetic life. Pause the game. Oh yes, also a huge amount of damage is just coming her way. No! Too strong! Damn you! I must take more essence! I must have the Yes, you must, and this is why Hexad is useful. Goodbye, phase two of the Melisan fight. However, she will hit us. Go get more Bowel Essence and open up that way. Which is fantastic. Right. Save now, because that went very well. And we move on to the next part of this fight, which involves going over here to deal with another... Prince, the Prince of Ice. This is Cryonax, who has Blizzard Trolls and Frost Salamanders. These are not as tricky as the uh, enemies we've just fought. So let's deal with them. We'll actually, have you start uh, doing that. And we'll just smash into Cryonax here. After, of course, we deal with the fact that you are taking a lot of damage. And that's the end of Crydax. You, by the way, are a little bit uh, stunned and startled. Okay, switch to a different weapon, please. And we'll take care of these, hopefully. If you happen to perish, Corgan, it's not the worst thing. I'd rather you don't. Oh, well, you perished. This is why we have resurrections. Let's just take care of you. Marvelous. 
So, Guava Potion, kind of need you here. Resurrection, please. On. We can do it all the way from here, by the way. All the way from here. And you're back. And fully healed, which is marvelous. Grab all your things. We're going to need all of them. Okay, we don't necessarily need all of them, but it's still nice of you to have all your things. Then we're going to prepare the same trap that we did for the, uh, put this over there, for the uh, second fight. Loads and loads of spike traps. Now we are going to run out of them eventually. We are going to run out of them. That it is. Right, all of that can be grabbed. We want you to uh, put that there, please. This is a Ring of Regeneration, which is marvelous. We want the Axe of the Unyielding. We want that there. We want that there. But truth be told, we just want the Axe of the Unyielding ready because that is ridiculously good. I mean, it's not likely we're going to instantly... Uh, Vorpal Melisarm, but wouldn't it be great? Okay, so we've done that. Now you need to quaff a couple of potions. I will listen. You also need to quaff a potion, and you're gonna have to quaff another potion to get even more healing. Okay, now you're at full. Go bother someone else. Over there, and we're going to hope that another. Four spike traps set about here will do the trick. This is why we've been putting points into setting traps. There we go. Another one. We only have three for next time, though. Marvelous. Now. Save. Over here. And what we'll do is we'll give it another go. You're not, uh... You're not hasted. You're not hasted. You're not really especially hasted either. How many more haste spells do we have? Uh, we have... Three. Ideally, I want to save these haste spells for the very final, um, battle. That's kind of what I want to do. So save again, and let's see if this does the trick. Yeah, so, we go here, we once again cut off uh, the pool's flow, stopping Melisarm for the time being. Let's see what you do now. Uh, immediately you take a load of damage. And we completely skip your dialogue, and you go back to there. I mean, you probably had something smart to say, but... We managed to get through it. Excellent. I don't mind that. She's like, I'm gonna... Oh, not again! Why do I keep falling into this trap? I don't know why you keep falling into this trap, Melazan, but I'm not going to complain that you do. How many of these do we have? Right. This time, we probably want to prepare a couple of uh, allies to help us. But first, you might need this as we deal with the third Elemental Prince. So we've dealt with one that is uh, ice, we've dealt with one that is air, we've dealt with one previously that was earth. Who wants to bet that the next one might be fire? It might just be fire. And it's not! Surprise, surprise, it's actually a Fallen Solar, an Alufiend, and two Maroliths. So, um, this is a situation where we actually kind of need Edwin, because, uh, these are nasty, nasty foes. They're very nasty. Because we can't actually hit the, uh, the, uh, Maroliths here. So let's focus on the Solar instead. Yes. We want to use the, uh, Wand of Spell Striking on you. Also, Poison. Poison is bad news. Okay, so Lars gone. And... Just need to deal with you if we can. It's gonna be a little bit tricky, actually. Let us get a Whirlwind attack here. And that here. 
And you're currently... Yeah, you're, you're charmed. Which is a little bit unfortunate. Yeah, this, this one's actually going to be a little bit trickier because... All of this. I mean, we could deal with you. However... It's this part that's tricky. Also, could you... Could you not do this near Edwin? Oh yes, can't actually do very much because uh, you are uh, capable of fully healing. And potentially tearing apart you. These don't tear apart... Uh, these don't tear apart uh, Edwin. We kind of need him. So let's do that. And just... Oh, hang on. You're taking a little bit of damage. There we go, a little bit of potion drinking, and you're gone! Okay. Also, you are, uh, poisoned. Which is unfortunate, but the poison ends quickly. So, two of you. And Dawn, who's a bit angry. So let's... As I say, these potions need drinking. And we need to really take care of you. There we go, we can finally actually hit you. And please don't die. Okay, this is actually, uh, this is, uh, Dawn dealing a lot of damage. So you've now got that potion. Just need you to... This is Dawn dealing a lot of damage. Could you, uh... Deal with that, please. Yes. Yes, you can. Marvelous. So now, I need you to not get... Oh, oh. There's a spell cast on the, uh... By the, uh, Marilith. And Dawn is doing a great job of distracting the Marilith as we ready another wand of spell striking. There we go. Protection's removed, and now we destroy it. Excellent. Now, we get ready for a really difficult fight, because this is the final fight. The very, very final one. And you'll know that we've used none of our exceptionally useful resources. We haven't used anything super useful. With that done, we have all the time in the world to buff for the final encounter, which we're going to start with, of course, by laying a couple of traps. And we only have two spike traps this time. We only have two. But we also have some snare traps, which we're going to be laying. As many of them as we possibly can. This may end up ending the fight before it starts, but I'm still doing it. We're not going to fail. And this justifies having Hexat. Most certainly. I mean, if Melisande's going to keep appearing in exactly the same location, we're going to lay so many traps down that it's going to be uh, a regrettable decision for her to reappear here. I mean, I don't know who laid more traps to deal with things, us or Wily e. Coyote, but let us merely say that this is exactly what we need to do. And, you know, one more... D no, that's a time trap. Don't set a time trap. Set this trap. Yep, there's more traps here that... Oh, we can't set any more traps in this area. Oops. Well, never mind. Right. Yes. Next thing we need to do is, uh... Let's get a couple of, uh improved hastes going. Because why not? We have enough for the entire team. So let's get them cast. That's the second one. And this is the final one. The axe be bloody ready. Next, we want a simulacrum. You we also want a stone skin. We also want a... Uh, Fallen Diva. What is it now? We also want a protection from fear, because you never know when that might be useful. Go bother someone and we also want a golem. 
and then we want a normal haste for everyone else. I'm busy, okay? I'm busy. And then I think we're as good as we'll ever be. Oh wait, not actually as good as we'll ever be. Uh, berserk for me, please. Be quick with it. Also yeah. use uh, hardiness. Hardiness. Also use hardiness. You also use hardiness. Are we ready now? Probably not. Oh, also, we got some loot. We're not picking that up. We are not picking that up. But you know what we are doing? We're saving. This is either going to end immediately, or it's going to be a disaster. But one way or another, let's have that final confrontation. We've stopped you for the time being. You are stronger than even I imagined. So be it. Your destiny versus mine. Let's finish this now once and for all. To the victor go the spoil! Also, you may not have realized, but you took all the damage in the universe. You're badly injured, yeah, though. That didn't already. kill you, I might add. It didn't kill you. We will, however, kill you. That we will. That we will. Let's go. Have you nothing else to do but bother me? Have at thee. Just need to deal a little bit of damage. And there we go. Didn't get to heal yourself, Melisan. We win! Ha <laughs> ha! Hello. Enough, Melisan. The gods have decreed this contest is over. You really should have been paying attention to where you put your feet. No! I am a god! This is over until I say it ends! Yeah, yeah, keep saying that, but who's got no health? To me. No! No! I... I will kill you all! You will do nothing, Amelisan, but accept your fate. Yep. We did it. The time that was mentioned has come, Godchild. There is a choice before you. You have prevailed against all that have assailed you. And now, you must decide your fate. And what a fate it will be, folks. The entire Baldur's Gate saga has led to this. The vast majority of the soul essences of the children of Baal, Lord of Murder, now belong to you and you alone. You must now decide what to do with this power. Be wise. The choice is irrevocable. What are my options? First. You may choose to surrender that portion of the essence which remains with you. It shall be given to Amelisa, and her soul, with all the essence it contains, shall be destroyed. Surrendering the essence will allow the gods to remove its evil taint and hide it well within the halls of Mount Celeste, forever preventing it from soiling further souls. Mm -hmm. You, Baldspawn, would be made immortal, free to continue your life destiny of your own choosing. The manipulations of gods will no longer be your concern, and your soul will be untainted. And my other choice? Once a Melisande's soul is destroyed and the essence released, you may accept it into yourself if you want it, and the throne of Baal will be yours to command. No doubt you are willing to embrace the sheer evil of Baal's essence. Certainly you have ambition to rival Baal or his priestess. And you shall assuredly meet the same folly. You disgust me. That's a line we wanted to hear, because there's a way to become a god where you don't assume the evil mantle. The power is yours to command, but it shall also bring godly enemies. Surely Sirik, the usurper of your sire's divine rule by Edict of Al the Overfather, 
will gain an interest in your progress. I imagine he would. Your future is unwritten, but once chosen, the gods know that it will be of significance to the universe. Know as well that one does not achieve godhood by simple act of redeeming. Indeed. You will have great power among the planes, but your evil taint will cause you to walk your path always alone. And good will ceaselessly counter your plans. We won't be alone. We'll have at least one who will be on our side forever. The choice is difficult. But these are your two options, Balsuan. This is where your destiny is realized, and your future begins. By the way, that, that shiver of excitement when you finally achieved something amazing? That's happening in spades right now. So this is what it comes down to. All the dangers you've faced, all the sacrifices you made, all for this. I can think of worse gods than you. But I ask you, are you truly comfortable with the idea of becoming Lady of Murder? Your disposition makes you well suited to be the God of Murder, if that is what you truly desire. That it does. I am no longer mortal. I did not seek to become what I am. I had no choice in the matter. You do. Before you make it, ask yourself, is this truly what I want to be? The blood of Baal runs through your veins, but your destiny is your own. There will be no turning back from a choice you make now, so choose wisely. Yes, the time has come. Fulfill our destinies. Become the new god of murder, and together we will usher in an age of chaos and destruction. As I said, there's one person shouting for my corner. Hm. I may see the difficulty for ye. Take your power. You fought for it hard and well enough. There be no need to give it up, and no one worth giving it up for. And besides all of that, if he becomes a power, you can reward us all the better for following ye about all these months. I've had enough of your smell. <laughs> Some gold would be fine, indeed. <laughs> oh, Corgan, I'll reward you well. What? Why are you looking at me? Take the power already. Isn't that what you came here for? this insufferable monkey around to see all its infinity lost. What would I get out of that? Oh, Edwin. Glorious to finally have the opportunity to grasp your birthright, to take up the reins of power as they are meant to be. Fail to do so, and the only point to your having come this far would have been to, fought off all, to have fought off all those who sought to stop you. There is only one path. Take it, and perhaps I will even be the first of your clerics one day. Think of it. I love this. When you have a good aligned party, lots of people are like, oh, you, you probably shouldn't think of the responsibility. But when you have an evil party, only Hexat has gone, no, think about it. Everyone else is like, totally do this. This is a great idea. Ah, oh, this is why I have all of you here. This is why we're a team, an unstoppable team. The time has come to make your choice, Balthar. What is your wish? I will retain the essence of Baal that is my right, and become a power of the plains. As you wish, though it brings me no pleasure to unleash such an evil onto the cosmos. You are wicked, Baal and your time as a power will be a difficult one, I swear. We'll see about that. Yes! Take what is rightfully yours, take the power, become a god, and know that I, Dornil Khan, am the first and most devoted worshipper of Terry Coleman, Lady of Murder. Ah, oh, yes! Your decision has been made, Godchild. Now the act must be carried out. Prepare yourself. And here we go. Seize the throne achievement unlocked.
Your mortal essence crumbles as you embrace your fate and take the legacy of Baal as your own. You welcome the divine power and feel your dark influence flow over all that you know. The abyss welcomes you and you know you can shape it to your darkest desires. All of your enemies have been crushed, but there will be more to come. You are one of many in the crowded plains, but you are certain to destroy any challenge. You have stolen the destiny of a god, and none shall stand in your way. In time, all will know your terrible name. Your tyranny shall be renowned. Your strength and guile legendary. You are the Ballspawn, Lord of Murder, and the mark you have carved upon the realms shall never fade. What of our companions? No longer with Terry Coleman, Vaconia went on to found a cult dedicated to Shar in the city of Waterdeep. One of her followers betrayed her, however, prompting the slaughter of the whole tainted lot. Shar admonished Vaconia strongly for this, but she was unrepentant and again wandered the realms. Vaconia was still formidable, and went on to prevent an attempt by the Knights of the Shield to take over Kalimport, and even worked with Drids de Erden to save the elven city of Sundan Esselar from a Zentarim plot. For this last act, the elves accepted her, and Queen Elysine bestowed the highest honours of the Seldarin, an accolade never before given to one of her dark kind. Vaconia reportedly bowed once without emotion and then left. Her fate remains unknown. Interesting, considering the ending that, uh... She said that she may become one of our clerics. Maybe she did in the end. I think there's another one, though, if we press, uh, done. Yes, here we go. Edwin gained great renown in his travels with Terry Coleman, and in the years following their association, he would exploit that infamy. In time, he achieved enough influence to subjugate even the Red Wizards themselves, becoming the greatest leader they had known in recent memory. A very recent memory, it turns out, as he was deposed scant days later. Such is the brief nature of conquerors in Thay, practically lining up for their turn in power. His only notable appearance following this embarrassment was in battle with Elminster of Shadowdale himself, a short affair that saw the end of Edwin's existence in the realms. Edwina, however, tends bar in a waterdeep tavern. She is a bitter, bitter woman. Oh dear. Corgan. After leaving Terry Coleman's company, Corgan Bloodaxe lived in as bloody a fashion as he could manage. He took control of an entire dwarven clan, killing their leader in secret and guiding their revenge to a target of his choosing. He could have lived in luxury, but his thirst for carnage was immeasurable, and he stunned the realms by pushing deep into the Underdark. The blind fury of the clan took even the Dark Elves by surprise, but holding territory in the home of the Drow is a hopeless proposition. Corgan was last seen burying his axe in the gullet of a High Priest of Loth, laughing as he struck. Dwarven legend immortalized the image, and his bloodlust is now called a crusade. History, it seems, finds more heroes than madmen. Interesting. Here we go. With no one to temper his wrath, it was inevitable dawn would come to a bad end. Though he escaped the wrath of the gods, there were others whose retribution could not be avoided. Hunted down and captured by a freelance jurist, Mercy White Dove, he was taken back to Luskan to stand trial. He was found guilty of the mass slaughter of every man, woman, and child in a village called Barrow where his dark path began. Sentenced to death, Dawn broke free of the prison on three occasions before the sentence could be carried out. Twice, he was tracked down by White Dove and returned. For their final meeting, Dawn was determined not to be taken alive, and in this respect he was successful. To save her own life, White Dove was forced to slay the so-called Butcher of Barrow. Tales of Dawn Ilkhan were told for decades after, both by parents with unruly children in need of discipline, and by those vile men and women who admired the half-orc's deeds. Oh dear. Well, turns out he didn't end up being my worshipper for long. And finally, beyond her acquaintance with the Balspawn Terry Coleman, little is known of Hexat, which is doubtless how she preferred it. 
Cabrina continued to tell stories about the vampire to new agents of Larlock, but replaced the cautionary tale of her loss in Dragomir's tomb with the inspirational one of her return seemingly from death to complete the mission she was assigned. Decades later, tales would spread throughout Cult of the Faded Woman, a vengeful demonic entity who targeted clerics of Uptau and drained their bodies of blood. Whether there's any truth to the stories or not, Uptau worship had declined drastically on the Colton continent, ultimately continuing only in small pockets of immigrant communities in cities such as Waterdeep. And there are the credits! Here we are, at the very end of the Throne of Baal, the end of the Baldur's Gate Saga, and my, what a fantastic game this has been. A much shorter game than Shadows of Arm, but to be fair, it is an expansion, that is to be expected. Also, these credits are probably going to be quite long, so I get to talk a fair bit about not just this game, but all of the games in the Baldur's Gate saga that I've LP'd, and it's been a fantastic journey. Not only seeing how the game progresses and how the stories, uh, the stakes ramp up, but also how Terry has changed. See, she started off as a uh, naive and inexperienced fighter in Candlekeep, and grew to claim her destiny as the Lady of Murder. Who would have thought when she was ambushed by people in uh, dormitories in Candlekeep that she would become so feared, so reviled? I don't know if the uh, you are evil thing uh, at the end of the solar was because of our alignment or because of our reputation. That was why I ended up tanking my reputation, but I think there was only one ending that could have been... Uh, Appropriate. Also, all these little bits of art here, really like that touch. Throne of Baal is a lot more linear than Shadows of Arm, and with good reason, it is an expansion and uh, it's a much smaller area. But there are a few things that I'm a little bit sad were not in Throne of Baal. Uh, you can go back to Watcher's Keep, of course, but we completed Watcher's Keep before we actually got to Throne of Baal, so that whole area wasn't really there as a thing we could do. There wasn't anything um, for quite a lot of the companions in Throne of Baal that I'm a little sad about. The fact that there wasn't an extra quest for Edwin, or Corgan, or any of them, uh, was a missed opportunity, I feel. Like, there's a extra quest, I think, for all of the new companions that were added in the Enhanced Edition, and I think there are tiny things for some people? But ultimately, it does feel like a very straight and narrow path right to the end of the game. But that, I imagine, was a design choice for, well, this is the final little bit, we have to get you there, and it was a very enjoyable excursion. There were times when we absolutely destroyed everything, and times when we were absolutely destroyed. And we certainly took advantage at the end of Hexat's trap-laying abilities. Though, if we hadn't have used that, I'm pretty sure with all of our spells and everything else that we would have eventually prevailed against the Melisarm. We certainly had to for the very first fight, and so we'd have to for all the other ones as well. Look at all these people that worked on this game, and uh, they all did a fantastic job. I mean, there were a few minor issues that occurred. Oh yes, one more thing I need to mention. The fact that if Hexat becomes a uh, mortal and... Uh, you lose all of her gear in that happening, that's pretty bad. I'd really hope that uh, at some point that will be altered and... Uh, oh look, you can see the program they used to actually make that. That is awesome. That is absolutely awesome. But either way, I I'd hope that at some point they'll change that, but being blunt, it's been so long since this game has been out, chances of that are pretty slim. You can't get these... Oh, you can? Oh, you can actually just scroll through the credits. That That is very interesting. You can scroll through them yourself. Wow! I didn't know that! I, I was just waiting for them all to scroll down really, really slowly. 
But yes, a very enjoyable end to a very enjoyable series. Like, a very enjoyable series. I mean, there are a few things I've missed. I haven't done the, uh, the Black Pits 1 and 2, and I haven't done Siege of Dragonspear, but I, I don't really have any desire to do any of them. Not anytime soon, anyway. The saga as I played it when I was younger is done. Baldur's Gate 1, Baldur's Gate 2, and Throne of Baal. And Terry has achieved... what? she set out to achieve. And it was a fantastic end to a great tale. A great tale indeed. And those are your credits. And when we, when we do done, we are straight back to the title screen. And that's it. Game completed. Godhood attained. For an ending of a campaign, attaining Godhood is a pretty big goal. And the Baalspawn Saga is done! Thank you very much for being here, everyone, through all of it, for it was quite a journey. Yes, a journey where I ended up hoarding loads of stuff. It wouldn't be me if I didn't do that, would it? No, it wouldn't. And we won anyway. Perhaps not the most dramatic ending, but an ending perfectly suited to me. And so, I'm Kikoskia, and that was Let's Play... Baldur's Gate 2, The Throne of Baal. What's to come after this? I have no idea right now. I'm gonna have to put some thought into this. I thought it would take a little longer to defeat Emelisan, and I was wrong. So I'm gonna have to do some pondering, but rest assured I will think of something. Probably something a little less dramatic, lengthy, and full of high stakes, because let's face it, that was an epic tale. Perhaps something a little less epic will follow. Or maybe I'll just double down and come up with something even more epic! Uh, probably not, but you never know. You never know. And so, I'll catch you next time, folks. And I'll see you then. For the next great adventure that probably won't involve attaining godhood. I say probably, because you never know with games, do you? You never, never know. And so, I'll catch you next time, folks, and I'll see you then. Later.